Yeah, this is a controller from a Zanussi tumble dryer. Um, I've got a couple of these uh, for various reasons and they go dead. They No lights on the, on the display panel, nothing happening. It's part of the, um, the Zanussi range, the ZDC, you know, 37200W, and there's a whole range of them, and they use the same controller. But you can see on the back here, these are where the buttons go. On these, on some, the buttons aren't populated, but the positions are on the circuit board. It's just um, for additional features for the different ones. So this is probably from a range of tumble dryers, and... Uh, it uses a, um, the mains comes in here and goes through this rotary switch effect to set your program and the timer. And uh, there on the back of this thing is a load of electronics, look, you can see that. And the low voltage for the electronics, clearly you've got mains coming in but you need some DC voltage, you know, around about 5 or 12 volts usually to con control the, the logic and to feed the brain with electricity, with the... Uh, with power and uh, yeah, and it's um it's a, it's failed twice this one and it's just a simple fault. It's the power comes in, goes through this uh, resistor here uh, in series with the mains, the main supply, and through this rectifier diode, which is a iron four thousand and one uh, four zero one. That's a you know thousand volt peak inverse voltage one amp diode into this reservoir capacitor which is, uh, what are we, well 400 volts uh, 10 microfarad so that's just, so at this point that's what I'm going to point with, <laughs> this point here on this circuitry, I'm going to give you a bit of a better view there this point here on this circuitry is going to be sitting around about 300 volts um, it's pretty unclear as to why they've um, put a resistor in there, and I'll explain that in a moment. And my dilemma at the moment is I don't know the value of this resistor, so I'm going to have to work it out from the schematic. What's the best value for this? Um, there is a Zeno diode here, but it's not actually related to this. This is a voltage uh, reference to the secondary side. But what they've done is I can't find a reference. I've used this chip before. There's a chip on the back here. If I turn it around that way, you can see it. There we are. It's an LNK304, and that's an offline um, buck regulator. So that takes in 300, 350 volts, anywhere between 90 and 350 volts, and usually switches it very fast through an inductor, a series inductor, to make an offline power supply. And then an offline converter is not what you think. Offline means it takes the power off the line and the DC voltage, low voltage output from it is referenced to the line. Okay, so it's not an isolated safe power supply. No way. For example, um, if you, depending on which way you got it connected, you could have the DC voltage at mains potential. You got two wires coming out, but they could be at 300 volts. Reference to ground and neutral because there is no isolation. Now what they've done is quite clever actually, because this is a very low cost chip and it's designed really for LED power supplies and stuff like that. Very low cost with this chip and a couple of components and an inductor you can make a 5, 12, 20 volt DC power supply that can supply two or 300 milliamps. Very low cost. You know, the few quid you can turn the mains into a DC supply driving things like LEDs and little controller circuits. But what they've done is they've, um, the primary, they've actually substituted the buck regulator tra uh, inductor, which is just normally an inductor. They've actually put a transformer in, which is quite nifty, quite nifty. I never thought of that. And um, so they are switching the primary of this uh, transformer as if it were the uh, buck regulator um, inductor. And then the current flowing there is clearly inducing uh, a voltage in the secondary. And in the secondary, you've got these two rectifier diodes, and that takes it off to your low voltage DC to provide the uh, power for the the micro and all the other bits and pieces on here that require low voltage DC. So, um, but I'm thinking either this is I've never seen I've these are used in some 
the amplifiers I repair, and I've never seen one of these fail short circuit, i.e. the mains, uh, the high voltage DC comes in and goes straight through and then blows up all your DC because it's only between the output of this and the DC is just an inductor which is switched at very high frequency with very short pulses of electricity, of current, to uh, actually provide these DC voltage on the other end. There's also going to be a, 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 a diode as well. But, um, yeah, I've never seen one of these fail short. You can imagine 300 volts going in, and then if this went into basically a fault condition where the input was shorted to the output, you'd have 300 volts going down your low voltage DC line via an inductor so you know it could be catastrophic for the electronics so they must have some sort of clamp or fuse in these things they're just dead and so I imagine it gets a bit things get a bit out of hand and there's a circuit in there which blows a fuse which stops the DC voltage or shunts it and blows a link inside to stop the high voltage DC getting into the low voltage DC side but in this case anyway they've used this in an interesting impl implementation where they yeah, so had a little bit more of a poke around it, and what they've got is they've got these relays require 12 volts DC to drive them. So these are three relays which are uh, have a relay coil inside. You put 12 volts on the relay coil, and it switches the mains contacts, which are turning power onto the heating element, turning power onto the motor, and so on, and um, the condenser, everything else. But the um, and what they've done here because of this transformer, they've got. They actually, with a very low cost uh, offline controller, they've managed to make a, a dual voltage power supply, which is quite clever. The uh, 12 volts of the relays is derived from the primary side of the transformer, and the 5 volts, presumably for the electronics, is derived from the secondary side of the transformer. So that from a buck regulator, they've added, made the inductor into a transformer, and they end up with a dual voltage power supply, 12 and 5 volts, which is very cheap, very cheap. And um, most of the uh, Italian uh, washing machines, they even use this chip for uh, one of the, the washing machines. have got a light inside the drum that goes round. They even use this chip with a few LEDs just to drive a couple of LEDs. So it's a widely used chip. But I know from experience it's very unreliable because I've seen it fail in quite a few pieces of the kit. Um, so, yeah, the name of the game really is... Um, is to find the value of this resistor so you can change it too because I've seen um, uh, this burn out twice on two different machines but I don't know what the value is so you can see it is wire wound if you if we just go into tele macro mode for a moment okay so there's a view of that resistor in tele macro mode and you can see I didn't do this damage by the way this was already there uh, when I took it apart and it's either vaporized that part, or I can't see the wires there. So it could be that um, the actual switching chip, the LNK, LNK 304G, has blown and melted this resistor. So this could be just a resistor failure, or it could be a fault condition based on something else causing this, overstressing it, and blowing. Uh, melting the thing and blowing the cover off the top of the resistor. There's a lot of wire missing there, so I presume it's been arcing, but strangely there's no metallization or blackness on the on the wires. I don't know what this is, so I'm going to try and probe between two or three turns of this and measure the resistance of two or three turns, and then just guesstimate the length of the wire between the two ends, number of turns, and then multiply it up and just do a bit of simple maths and come up with a rough value for the resist resistor. So I'm just going to probe this and see if I can find the value of the resistor by measuring actual um, resistance of a few turns. Right, here we go. See if we can get a connection on these turns. Annoyingly, this meter has a 200 ohm range with a beeper in it. 
my other meter is still in the car. So I've got 3.8 ohms there, 3.8 ohms. And that looks like, so it's going to be a pretty low value resistor. There you go. 3.7 ohms on there. 3.7 ohms. I'm going to review the video. I can't quite count it. I'm going to blow the video up and uh, work it out how many of the turns there are and then multiply it like that and then we'll have our value for the resistor. So one moment. Well update. It turns out I've um, replaced the resistors and then put a isolated power supply into the unit via a 60 watt light bulb and when you turn the power on the light bulb lights up so there's a short on the board um, and it's this component here which is the LNK 304DN or LNK 304 302 range the offline switching chip so I've ordered another one of those and I'll put that back in and hopefully that will fix it in a conjunction with the resistor array I didn't have the right value at the right wattage so I just made them out of um, one watt or half watt wire wounds so um, actually metal film not wire wound um, yeah, so this has gone, the input of this has gone short, and then the resistor took the brunt of the power and blew the resistor up. Um, it is a thought, actually, you know, this could, this resistor range here, um, I might check that to make sure that they fail by going bang and just, uh, rather than catching fire or something, so you get quite a lot of heat out of that, so yeah, a thought. Right, so the I've got the new chip just here, and there's the old chip. I put some uh, Kingbo flux. This stuff is really good. I use it in most of my videos, but uh, a little dab will do you, and it'll make the soldering experience a lot more satisfying if you've got nice shiny solder joints that wet nicely and don't bridge. It stops bridging, you know. It's fantastic a bit of flux, but you need to clean it off with some IPA or isopropyl alcohol or what they I think it's also called isopropanol it's very cheap solvent very effective for degreasing and cleaning and it's particularly effective for cleaning circuit boards so I just keep mine in a little bottle little hair dye bottle because I'm that age squirt it on and then rub it off with a, a new toothbrush and it's very effective so here we go we're going to try and get this the air gun's been on for a few minutes just warming up and we're set to 340 degrees, which is a little bit high, but I haven't got all day. So I just apply the heat. Don't forget, it's important to warm the new component up. I've put some flux on the legs of the new one as well, just to make it solder a little better. And just generally heating around and just being generally patient is the key to this. And if you see any sign of scorching or browning on the components then you've definitely got it set too hot. Sometimes they go brown, sometimes the labels melt and this kind of thing. You've got it too hot. So there we are. I'm just going to let it heat up a little bit more so it leaves the solder behind. Okay, and then just, I might just apply some more, a little bit more solder on there. You can see how sticky that solder pad there is. Watch this. A little bit of application of the old flux. Not too much. Okay. And then reflow it. Look at it now. Look at it now. That's the difference between not enough flux and the right amount of flux. Don't they look better? Okay, so reheat and drop the new component on. I could actually solder these just with the soldering iron because there's nowhere near fine pitch but it seemed like a good idea to use the correct tool for the job. So you see now that solder I just put on was un uh, was leaded solder so it's a much lower melting point and flows much more nicely. So we're gonna, it's already melted on the board look and uh, just going to preheat the component to get the temperature up. Otherwise you'll get dry joints on the, uh, it's a quite hefty component this with big legs and it'll suck the heat out. So just drop it on, there, 
like that and you can see the solder will pull it back into position when it's in the right place remember to regulate heat by moving the hot air gun up and down if you just sit there concentrating on one thing and not the other you might overheat the thing so a little bit of flowing just to make it flow nicely they all look nicely wetted so then remove the heat obviously don't need to tell you where pin 1 has to be um, in the same position ok so I'm going to let that cool down and we'll try it out now the moment of truth is it going to work so I've just got mains coming in here this mains input is via a light bulb 100 watt light bulb so if there's a short here you don't get explosions which are quite fun but you know not the best thing makes the dog jump for a start um, yeah, so this is supplied by a light bulb and an insulating transformer, or an isolation transformer, should I say. So um, on this rig, live and neutral has no significance because it's the this is connected to a winding of a secondary of a transformer. And then the input to that transformer is driven by a variac, so I can check this power supplies over the ranges which they uh, operate at. But anyway, here we go. I'm just going to switch the power on and let's see what happens. Remember, it was completely dead before. Ah, there we go. Yep, seems to be working. I'm going to turn it over and just make sure we've got the right voltages. Bearing in mind this might be charged up, this little fella here. It will spoil your day. Well, I'm sure it's going to check out okay. It's just interesting to see how, you know, you can imagine this tumble dryer would end up in the, uh, the scrap heap just for the sake of a 99p component. Um, so I hope you found that interesting and thanks for watching Magic Smoke.